everyone, and welcome to the Critical Thinking Evaluation Demonstration video. In this video, we will evaluate two web sources for credibility. To determine overall credibility, we can look at five different areas authority, citations, objectivity, relevance, and date. Each of these areas provides details and context about the information's creation and purpose. We'll be evaluating two web pages about meditation and stress relief. The first source is How to Practice Basic Meditation for Stress Management from the website Very Well Mind. The second source is Meditation in Depth from the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, which I'll abbreviate to NCCIH. When we get to objectivity, I'll also use a third source, which is Meditation for Stress from Headspace. As we explore these sources, you'll notice that they are strong in some areas and weak in others. That's normal. We're not looking for one perfect source. Instead, we're looking for the most credible sources we can find that meet our information needs. With authority, we're investigating what qualifications or credentials a writer has to give us information on a topic. There's many different types and levels of authority. You're probably most familiar with educational authority and governmental authority. Educational authority refers to any formal degrees or specialized training an author has that indicate expertise. Governmental authority refers to the formal obligations and powers an author has from working for a portion of the government. While these types of authority are often privileged, experiential authority and cultural authority are equally important. Experiential authority refers to an author's direct participation with a topic. For example, participants in the Women's March on Washington in 2020 have a different understanding of the event than those not present. Cultural authority comes from an author's membership in a culture or subculture. For example, members of the Homa tribe have insight about their culture and needs that others lack. You may need to include several authors to cover all authorities relevant to your work. As much as possible, you want to be inclusive. For our first source, MS is listed after the author's name. MS means Master of Science, which is a type of degree. But just having a degree doesn't indicate authority. We need to see the focus of her degree. On this site, selecting her name redirects me to her full bio. The bio lists that she has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology and a Master of Science degree in Counseling. It also mentions that she has experience with stress management through her schooling and work as a life coach. She has specific training and experience in the area I'm researching. For these reasons, she would be a good authority. Our second source is a government source, so we determine authority differently. Most of the time, departments or groups create government sources rather than a single author. To determine authority, we need to look at the group's staffing and mission. I can find this information on the About NCCIH webpage. In the short summary provided, I see that the NCCIH is the Federal's lead agency for scientific research on complementary and integrative health approaches. It is also one of the 27 institutes in the National Institutes of Health, which is then in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Each of these institutes and departments are the portions of the federal government responsible for scientific research on diverse medical and health care topics. I can look for further information about their director, who has a medical degree, or their deputy director, who has a Ph.D., to learn more about their specific qualifications. Each link provided on this page leads me to more detail about their organization. Based on this information, the NCCIH is also a good authority. It's an appropriate government group for my topic, since the NCCIH investigates complementary and integrative health. It is also overseen by two other larger health agencies. They have experts in key positions throughout the organization. In each of these cases, the type and amount of authority is different. It's hard to say which one is best. That will depend on what your focus is. With citations, we're investigating whether the source contains ways to verify their information and its accuracy. As the name suggests, we can check if the source provides citations, references, or links to sources used to create their work. 
We can also look for evidence of editing or review. Editors and reviewers help check sources for accuracy. Some of your sources will have both citations and editing, while others may have one or the other. That said, there's a few red flags to look for with citations. Having no citations or editing would be one, but you want to look at the amount, type, and depth of the citations and editing too. If a source provides citations or links, but only to other material from the same author or website, that's problematic. It shows they're not researching on a wider scale. Likewise, if a source mentions a study or research, but gives no details to help you find it, like the author, title, or date, you can't double check the accuracy of their claims. Editing can range from copy editing to correct spelling, to fact checking, to peer review, meaning it can be superficial or in depth. For our first source, we have a mixed bag in terms of citations. They provide links throughout, but these all link to other very well-mined web pages. Further down, they have a section called Article Sources with a plus sign. Selecting the plus sign expands to show their sources. Ironically, they only have one, which is the NCCIH source that we're also looking at. However, they have a reviewer who is a certified meditation instructor. With her experience, she can ensure the accuracy of the steps provided. I would consider the citations here as average. Linking and citing more sources outside of their own web page would definitely improve it. For our second source, the citations are stronger. They also provide links throughout. Sometimes these links are to definitions, but often they bring you to other outside sources. The NCCIH is not just linking to its own work. In the section labeled Key References, they provide a formal list of journal articles and government sources. If they're not linked, I still have all the information I need to locate them in our library. In the section labeled Acknowledgements, it lists all the expert reviewers for both the previous 2014 review and the current 2016 review. With objectivity, we're investigating how well the source presents factual, unbiased information. We associate bias with its most extreme forms, like racism, sexism, or homophobia. However, bias is anything that influences the perception or presentation of ideas. We all have biases because we have unique worldviews based on our life experiences. For example, as a librarian, I'm biased in supporting libraries. I think access to information is important, and I think libraries are key in helping people access it. That bias influences how I think, teach, and vote. To be objective, I have to acknowledge my biases and ensure they don't cloud my work. Objective sources minimize bias by providing verifiable facts, avoiding conflicts of interest, and presenting balanced coverage when there are diverse views on a topic. Balanced coverage means covering the diverse views accurately, respectfully, and equally. Our first two sources are pretty objective. We have seen thus far that they have verified their facts with citations. From looking at their authors and reviewers, we have found no personal or financial conflicts of interest. However, when it comes to representing diverse views, our second source is a bit more objective. In the section labeled, What the Science Says About Safety and Side Effects of Meditation, it acknowledges situations where meditation may worsen pre-existing physical or mental conditions and the need to communicate with doctors and meditation instructors. Our first source assumes that everyone reading the web page is physically and mentally able to follow its instructions. That kind of implicit bias is usually not intentional, but as you can see, it still affects others. I'm going to pull in our third source, Meditation for Stress from Headspace, to show an example of a less objective source. Like our first two sources, this web page provides some verifiable facts and citations. However, unlike the other sources, Headspace has a motive. It wants you to use its app when you meditate. That conflict of interest shows itself in a couple of places. First, there are two prominent Start Your Free Trial buttons even before we read further. The end of the page is another ad to sign up for free. A free trial means that eventually they want you to pay for their service. They have a conflict of interest in presenting information. 
they benefit financially if you use their product. Second, they mentioned a 2018 study where participants used their Headspace app and showed positive results. That implies that using the Headspace app specifically is what led to positive results. However, the linked study mentions the benefits of mindfulness meditation found in many other studies and specifically states that evidence specifically supporting the efficacy of mindfulness-based smartphone apps is scarce. In short, the Headspace website wants to use the study as proof their app works, but that's not exactly what the study says. Their motive, you using the app, has influenced how they are presenting the information. With relevance, we're investigating how specifically and frequently useful information related to our topic is included, and how appropriate the information is to our final work. Usually we check that a source mentions our topic, but how often and how detailed affects its usefulness. If a source mentions your topic vaguely, it doesn't provide much for you to build into your work. If a source discusses only one aspect of your topic in depth, that's okay, as long as you find another source to fill in the gaps. It's normal and expected that you'll combine multiple sources to cover all relevant aspects of your topic in your work. Different sources will be relevant to you at different stages of your research too. You may find broad general sources, like encyclopedia articles or news articles, relevant when beginning your research. They help you gain an understanding of the topic needed to dive deeper. You probably won't include them as sources in your final work though. As you read and research more, your focus and interests also evolve. Your final sources will feature more specific, in-depth discussions of those particular aspects of your broader topic. Our first source does mention both meditation and stress management. However, it doesn't provide much information about how meditation helps relieve stress. It mostly provides instructions on how to meditate. That's helpful in understanding meditation overall, but not really relevant to my research. Our second source is more relevant to my needs. It provides a brief summary of the overall state of research on this topic, which was helpful in getting started. It then provides details with linked studies about the effectiveness of meditation for many conditions. I still need sources that focus only on how meditation relieves stress or decide how to refocus my topic, but this web page gives me explanations, details, and additional sources to help me get started. With DATE, we're investigating whether information is current enough to be accurate. How up to date your information needs to be will depend on your topic and your discipline. A general rule of thumb is about five years for hard sciences, like medicine or chemistry. Anything older than that, you'll want to compare to more recent sources to ensure accuracy. For humanistic disciplines, like art or history, accurate sources may be from the past 10 or 15 years, or even earlier. Different types of sources list their date in different ways. Books list a copyright date while periodical articles have a publication date. For web sources, you might have a revision date, last updated date, or publication date. That means you may need to look carefully for the date of web sources. One important note is that the copyright date doesn't tell us the date of a web source. The copyright date only tells us when the company renewed their copyright, not when the information was posted or updated. If you only find the copyright date for your web source, then you can't tell how current the information is. For our topic, which is health-based, we'd like to stay within that five-year range. For our first source, the date is listed at the top. We see that it was updated November 17, 2020. At the time of this recording, that's within the last year. That's pretty recent. For our second source, the date is listed at the bottom instead we see it was updated in April 2016. At the time of this recording, that's a little over five years ago. It's right at the edge of our five-year range. It's usable, but I'd also want to compare it to more recent information to make sure it's still accurate. Note that on the bottom right of our first source, we have the copyright date of 2021. On the bottom right of our second source, it says, Site last updated August 10, 2021. Neither of these indicate how up-to-date the information on the specific web page is, though. They only apply to the entire website. 
I point these out as examples of why you need to examine the dates you find on web sources carefully. I hope you find this video helpful as you complete today's assignment. If I can be of any help, please don't hesitate to contact me. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.